Hello everybody, it's Wendy and today we are going to do a little bracelet using products from the Bargain Beadbox September 2020 edition. I know you can't see this whole thing and I'm not going to move the camera because then I'll just have to adjust it again. <laughs> so if you are not familiar with Bargain Beadbox, it is a monthly subscription service where you get about $65 to $70 worth of beading supplies. A lot of them are gemstone beads. You get findings, you get all kinds of great stuff. Bead caps, you know, clasps, all kinds of stuff for um, $17.95 a month. That includes your shipping. Um, so it's a great deal. And then you also get access to their sister store and a 30% off coupon that you can use over and over and over all month long in their sister store. So I love Bargain Bee Box. It's one of my favorite beading subscription services. Um, this is a coupon code, Wendy2, you can use if you're interested in subscribing and get $2 off your first box. So I'll link all that information in the description box below. But here's what we're going to use today to make a bracelet. So I'm going to show you each thing. I know it looks like a big pile here. We're going to use these beautiful garnet um, faceted rondelles that were in the Bargain Bead Box this month. We're going to use these copper spacer beads. We're going to use these really pretty coin, little coin beads, and we're going to use these hex beads. I love these. These are beautiful. These pick up the garnet color and the blue. So pretty. Um, I've got six crimp beads out here, and I've got a lobster claw. I have the, the ring from the toggle clasp, and I've cut off the loop, okay? So it'll make sense later, but this is just the ring from the toggle, and I cut the loop off of it. I have some wire guardians here. I'm just going to set them out of the way. I have the bead caps that came in the box this month. I have these little tree of life links that came in the box this month. And let's see some more of these blue beads. I've created a component here. Um, so none of this part came in the box. You will have to make this if you want to do the bracelet just like me. But I will say Beadbox Bargains has these flowers on their website right now. And I love the way that this garnet color matched up with these beads. It just looks beautiful together. Now this is two filigree pieces glued together. These filigree pieces are also on my website. Okay, so if you want to make this, you can get your flower from Beadbox Bargains. You can get your filigree from me. Um, and I just glued two pieces of the filigree together so it would have enough loops. I needed it to have enough loops here. And I just glued the flower on with E6000 and made my own little component. Okay. Um, you're going to need some eye pins and some jump rings. And I think that that's everything. And if I forgot anything, then forgive me. <laughs> we will figure it out as we go. All right, so we're going to make, oh, and one other thing, you are going to need some fishing line. I know you can't see this, it's clear, but I have got Berkeley fishing line. <clears throat> this is six pound. It's just monofilament fishing line. And the reason I'm using this, I don't like tiger tail for multi-strand bracelets. It just, it doesn't lay right. It's stiff and I just don't like it. So I'm using this uh, monofilament. I think it's going to work great. So you'll need some of that. All right, so we'll go ahead and get started here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move some of these beads out of the way so that you all can see what I'm doing. And I'm going to lay my filigree piece in the middle here of my work area because that's what I'm going to be working around, okay? So this side is going to have three strands. This side is going to have one strand, and it's going to be these little tree of life links. So that's the first thing that we're going to do. We're going to make our little links here. And to do this, I'm going to put one of these hex beads in between each little tree. And I considered putting these blue beads over here as well. Um, I'm not sure I want to do that. I want to make a link between the tree and the hex beads. And I would kind of like to incorporate these, but I would like to incorporate these as well. So I may do this. I may do the garnet this way and then one in the middle with the blue, just like that. I think that might be what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna take my eye pins and I am gonna use these um, bead caps as well. I'm gonna thread on my garnet bead 
I hope these will go on these eye pins. That may just uh, mess up my whole thing here. They're tiny. Yeah, they do. Okay. So my garnet bead, a bead cap, the hex bead, another bead cap, and a garnet bead. And there, get on there now. No, that one's not wanting to go. There we go. There's my little component that we're going to make, okay? So I'm going to take my chain nose pliers. I'm going to bend my wire at a 90 degree angle like this. I'm going to take my cutters and trim that off. And then I'm just going to take my round nose pliers and I'm going to make a loop. Okay, just like that. And there's our little piece. Now what I want to do is I want to make sure that both of these loops are facing the same direction. So I'm just going to take my pliers and twist until it lays just like that. Okay. And I'm going to make three of them. Now, one thing that I'm seeing right now is that this is going to be super long already. So I may just need the two. Actually, I think I do just need the two on this end. I have a really, really small wrist. And as much as I hate it, because it makes it really hard to do a bracelet that, you know, you can have very much on it. <laughs> um, because my wrist is so tiny, but we're going to do this anyway. So I'll do the coin bead on this one, the bead cap, my hex bead, another bead cap, and the coin bead. Yeah, I wish my whole self was as small. <laughs> I mean, my wrist is super tiny, but I need to lose weight. So I wish my whole body was that small. That would be fantastic. <laughs> but it's not. Okay, so here we go. We're going to make our loop. And I'm going to twist them to make sure that they are both facing the same direction. Just like that. Okay, and there's our second little component. Now, I can tell already, because if I measure this, it is... Yeah, it's five inches long already. My wrist is only six and a half, so I'm only going to here if I'm going to make this fit me. So, yeah, I'm probably going to at least make it seven inches. We'll see how it goes. This piece is kind of big, but I like it. I could do it like this. I could hook this directly on here, have a tree of life, this one, and the tree of life. I may do it that way. We'll see. I don't know. We'll see here in a second. Okay, so now we're going to do our other three strands. So to do this, I'm going to take my fishing line, and I wanted to make um, a, a, a bunch of the garnets with just a few of these blue ones in between on each side. So I'm just going to thread on, you know, five or six of the little garnet beads first. And I do have my glasses on, so I should be able to do this, but it's proving difficult anyway because, you know, the fishing line's clear, and these little garnet beads are kind of hard to see. I'm going to take a bead bug and put a bead bug on here just so they don't slide all the way down to the end of my fishing line. <laughs> okay, let's do another one. On the little hole in it. These little holes are tricky to find. Okay, now we're going to do a coin bead. Yeah, and I'm just going to um, put a, a few garnet beads and then a coin bead. Not even in any... I'm not going to do the same amount each time. I'm just going to randomize it. So we'll do three garnet beads here. And a coin bead. You know what? Maybe I will do it the same each time because it's going to look kind of strange if I don't. Okay. We'll do four, the four garnet beads. Four garnet beads. If I can find the hole. Goodness. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> and the coin bead. Okay. And again, same thing. One, 
two, three, and four. All right, let me see how long that is, because that actually may be as long as I can go with it. Yep, it's getting pretty close to being as long as I can go. I'm going to go one more set. I'm going to take a major chance. <laughs> I'm going to do one more coin bead and four more garnet beads. I think that this month's box was so pretty. I love these garnet. They're just beautiful, these garnet beads. They're so deep, a burgundy color. Which I love fall colors anyway. Two, three, come on now. And one more. Okay, so there we have that one. I'm going to cut this and I'm going to leave myself a little room on the end down here so I have enough room to attach my wire guardian. And I'm just going to lay this up here for a second and I'm going to make one more. So I will pause the video while I make the second one so you don't have to watch me do the same thing that I just did. Okay, so I've got my two strands of garnet beads and coin beads here. So I'm going to set them aside for just a moment. And we're going to make the middle row, which is going to have these hex beads in it. And the coin beads as well. Okay, so I'm going to take another piece of the fishing line. I'm going to put the, my chair squeaking. I'm sorry, there's no baby crying. <laughs> Somebody told me one time it sounded like a baby crying. <laughs> nope, there's no baby here. It's just the chair. Okay, so we're just going to do, I think I'm just going to do the row of hex beads. I don't even think I'm going to put the blue beads in between. Yeah, I'm just going to do a row of these hex beads. I think that'll look better. These are a little bit easier to string on, thank goodness. Whoops, unless you drop them off like that. Thankfully, I don't have to string on too many. Because my wrist is so <laughs> daggone tiny. <laughs> okay, there we go. And see how this picks up? It's picking up the, the red, it's picking up blue. It's really pretty. These are beautiful beads. And I want to make sure that I get these the same exact length as um, the other sections there that I did. Um, I ended up, I don't, I don't know how many hex beads that you guys have. I had a, an extra set of hex beads, but I didn't get the, um, I didn't get the bicones. So I love these hex beads. I'm glad that I got extra of them, but um, I didn't get the bicones, so... You know, you guys might have to substitute with something else. And that is exactly perfect. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to attach these to our component. Okay, so I have to make sure here that I have um, three, so one, two, three loops on this side and one loop on this side that I can attach this to. So I have to find a spot on this lotus flower that's why I glued two of them together to give me a little more options. So it looks like here I have one right here and I have a one, two, and three right here. So that's probably going to be my best spot for doing this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a crimp bead and a wire guardian. I'm going to thread on my crimp bead like this. And then I'm going to thread one side of my wire guardian. I'm going to take it, I'm trying not to let the crimp bead, well, it's not going to matter, it's not going to run. If, sometimes they go inside if you have bigger beads, but these garnet beads are so small it can't do that. Okay, and I'm going to take my monofilament and thread it back through my crimp bead. I've got fuzz from my mat. Okay, just like this. Well, actually, that's not, hang on, I just jumped ahead of myself, didn't I? I do it every time. I need to hook this on to my filigree piece. <laughs> Alright, so I've got my crimp bead on. 
there it is. I've got my wire guardian going on here, and I need to hook this onto my filigree piece. So let me make sure again that I haven't lined up right, because I just screwed that up. Okay, so we're going to take this and just feed it right through our filigree piece until it goes right up into the wire guardian just like that, okay? And then I'm going to put it back through the crimp bead, just like this. Now, I like to take my wire guardians and take this little plier and just pinch the end of them together right here a little bit. Just like that. I just feel like it makes it lay prettier. And then I'm just going, now you can see why I put the bead bug on the other end. I would have dumped all the beads off if I hadn't had it on there already. <laughs> so now I'm just going to take my little crimp bead and I'm going to mash him down. Now, if I would have had um, covers, crimp covers in copper, I would definitely have used them. But I'm finding that I have nothing in red copper, hardly. I had exactly one <laughs> crimp bead cover. So that clearly was not going to work. So yeah, I am um, just not going to use them on this. And I'm going to take my beads here. What I'm doing now is I'm threading my beads up both. See how I have some leftover monofilament here? I'm just going to thread some of my beads onto both strands of the monofilament. And that's just going to make it a little more secure, okay? And you don't have to do it the whole way down, but um, if you want to trim it up closer, you can. But I like to do that. I feel like it just, I don't know, it just makes me feel like it's a little more secure. So I'm just taking my beads and putting them in there. Hopefully it'll go in most of these. Well, it's not wanting to now. Okay, there we go. And I'm just going to go ahead and cut it off. Okay, so here it is. It's through a lot of the beads. And so I'm going to go ahead and cut it. Make sure you don't cut the strand that has your beads on it. I've done that before, and that's really annoying. <laughs> okay, so there we have that on. Okay, now what I need to do is I need to finish off the other end of it. So I'm going to take my bead, bu bead bug off. I am going to thread on another crimp bead. Another wire guardian. And I'm going to take my ring. I'm sorry. I hit that camera. And I'm going to thread the wire guardian onto my ring. And then put the monofilament through the other side of my wire guardian. Just like this and into the crimp bead, back through the crimp bead. Now, if you find that your ring is a little bit thick, um, you could always hook this on with a jump ring, but I think this one's going to be fine. And I'm gonna go through a few of the beads here, if I can get it to. There we go, even if it's just one or two. Now you want to pull this tight, but you don't want it to be so tight that it has no movement. And actually, I may go ahead and hook this on with a jump ring because it's looking like it's a little, it's looking like it's a little tight for the wire guardian to be on that ring. So what I'm going to do then is just go ahead and put it through without attaching anything like this. Okay. So I just have my wire guardian, my crimp bead, and my beads. I don't, I'm not attaching the ring in there because I'm, I'm just going to put it on with a jump ring. It seemed like it was a little tight for the ring. I was hoping it wouldn't be, but it seems like it is. So what I was saying is you want to pull this up close and you want to make sure that your monofilament is threaded into the wire guardian. See, mine has slipped out, so I'm going to make sure it's in there, laying in the little track here for the wire guardian because otherwise it's not going to protect it from anything protect your wire okay now I'm going to take my flat nose my chain nose pliers 
I'm going to bend this wire guardian in a little because I, I just like to do that. I think it looks better and my one filament slipped out again. So you got to make sure this is really fiddly, I know, but it's definitely worth it. The wire guardians will protect your monofilament from fraying, and you've got to get it just right. You don't want this to be too tight, and you don't want it to be too loose, okay? So it's just, you've got to fiddle with it for a minute. So that is pretty much perfect, and I am going to crimp that down just like that, okay? So my monofilament's in there, and it's not too, too, um, too rough or too um, tight in the, oh, I need to go to bed. It's not too tight. It's got room to move. <laughs> okay. So there's the one. That was just one. So <laughs> I am going to pause the video and attach the other two just exactly like I did this one. Okay. Okay. So I have all three of my, um, strands here hooked on and I'm going to go ahead and hook them on this jump ring. So or hook them on with jump rings to the regular ring. So I'm just going to take it and just hook them on. And I'm trying to use the smallest jump rings that I can. I don't like to use really big jump rings if I don't have to. So we'll see how these work. That works fine right there, but that is a thin, well, I think they're going to be okay. That's a thin spot in the, the toggle. And this one is not a, it's not a open jump ring, <laughs> which makes it kind of hard to open it. Okay, let me find another one. There we go. I have all my jump rings mixed together. I know I've said this before, but I was really silly when I first started beading and I just mixed everything together. I didn't separate things, which was not smart. So now I know better and I separate my jump rings out, but the ones that I got that I've had for a long time are still all mixed together. All right, so we're just attaching the three strands right here to the toggle. Or the toggle ring we're not using it as a toggle and there they are okay so that's how that looks now we're going to take this over here and we are going to hook these together and let me measure this yeah i definitely cannot go any longer i was hoping i could add back in the other element there but i can't so i'm going to use very very small jump rings over here and i'm going to hook um this to the lotus flower or to the filigree with the jump ring and I'm trying to make sure that I do it in the center loop right here okay hopefully my flowers glued on good enough it won't fall off right now okay so there we have that now this one I'm going to just hook the link directly to this I don't want to use so many jump rings that it takes up a lot of room let me turn this around and so I'm just going to open this link right here, if I can, and hook it directly to my little Tree of Life charm. Because every jump ring that you put in just, you know, takes up more room. And I don't want to take up any more room than I have to. And then the same thing with this little link. I'm just going to open this. And we're just going to hook them straight on here without a jump ring. Okay, just like that. And hopefully that'll be okay. I mean, if you have to use a jump ring, you just do. If it doesn't lay right or if you're... Um, little link isn't big enough, but I think this is going to be okay. Okay, and one thing that I see that I did is I hooked a tree on upside down. <laughs> Leave it to me to do that. So we got to flip that around because I don't want him upside down. All right. Did I put him on upside down again? Oh my gosh, you guys. I really am going to have to go to bed, I think. Why is this... Not going on right. There we go. 
Sorry, bloopers. Okay. All right, so there we have that. Now, we're going to take our lobster claw clasp right here, and we're just going to hook it on with a small jump ring. That's another closed one. I'm going to have to clean this. I'm going to have to go through and <laughs> clean this thing out because I'm having issues. Okay, so let's hook this guy right on here. Like this and there we have our cute little bracelet um, so I like this really well I think it's adorable there's what it's gonna look like on the wrist and so yeah I hope you guys enjoyed the video I know it got kind of long and I'm sorry but um, you can find the lotus leaves on my website you can find everything else on bargain beadbox or beadbox bargains and I'll see you in the next video bye